Hello and welcome to the Witness History Podcast with me, Dan Hardoon. Today, we're exploring the legacy of the French government's nuclear tests in Algeria in the early 1960s. I've been speaking to Abdul Karim Tuhami, who was just a teenager when he heard that France would be conducting a nuclear test near his home. A few days before, the French authorities announced there would be a bomb explosion, telling the population not to panic. They said it would cause a small earthquake and that would be it. But the test went disastrously wrong, with grave consequences to this day. We realized that we'd experienced our own Chernobyl, and in the years since, we started to find explanations for all sorts of diseases in the local population. Abdul Karim grew up in the southern Algerian city of Taman Raset, surrounded by the Sahara Desert. I would describe it as a peaceful village with a lot of gardens, wild animals and migrating birds. It was a very nice place to live until the catastrophe. Most people at the time were nomads who made a living from agriculture and farming. Like many of the young people my age, I had big dreams and we lived under French military rule. Algeria had been a French colony since 1830. In the 20th century, as rivalries between global superpowers were hotting up, France decided to develop its own nuclear capabilities. It chose the wide desert expanse of the Algerian Sahara as the test site for its first explosions. The first French nuclear test took place on the 13th of February 1960. It was three times more powerful than the bomb America had dropped on Hiroshima in World War II. At the time, France's defence minister Pierre Mesmer insisted that the tests were safe. All precautions were taken so that neither the populations close to nor those distant from the site of the explosion were exposed to any danger. In March 1962, after a bloody eight-year war, Algeria gained independence under the Evian Accords. But during the bitterly contested negotiation, the French government secured a crucial concession that France could continue its nuclear tests in the Sahara. In May that year, France conducted an underground nuclear test at a mountain about 150 kilometers away from Abdul Karim's home. The nomads who lived in the area were evacuated. There was a big explosion and we felt an earthquake. People who were closer to the explosion said the mountain shook and there was lots of smoke and a huge cloud of dust. There was an enormous panic. The engineers had seemingly underestimated the strength of the blast and the underground tunnel which had been dug for the bomb was not sealed properly. As a result, the explosion managed to crack the mountain and a huge radioactive cloud escaped, contaminating everything in its wake. Abdul Karim, were the locals frightened when this happened? Yes, we were a little bit scared, but when we saw that nothing much happened, there were no deaths, no casualties, the houses didn't fall down, we just carried on with our lives. This failed nuclear test, known as Beryl, was just one of 17 tests that France conducted in Algeria between 1960 and 1966. According to a statement from the French Ministry of Defence, 1,675 people present at the Beryl test had to be sent for decontamination. In line with French policy, some of the remaining radioactive equipment, including scrap metal and military uniforms, was hastily buried in the Sahara Desert. It wasn't until some time later that this poisonous legacy would be uncovered. The Soviet government reports an accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the Ukraine. Around the time of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster in 1986, Soviet experts visited Algeria and detected the presence of radioactivity in the environment. 
Those experts told us that nuclear waste was buried there and advised us not to go near the mountains. And then we knew that we had our own Chernobyl. And we started to find explanations for all those diseases in the local population. It's difficult to measure the impact of this radiation on public health due to a lack of available data from the time. But local doctors have reported an unusual number of health problems typically associated with radiation. For example, birth defects, many cancers such as leukemia, thyroid cancer and other illnesses that doctors couldn't explain. We used to live a healthy lifestyle. We ate natural food and had a good life expectancy. It was only later on we understood that the only explanation for all those diseases was the contamination of our natural environment. To this day, it's still unclear where or how much nuclear waste is still buried in the Sahara. Nuclear expert Jean-Marie Collin recently co-authored a report on the impact of France's nuclear tests. In our report, we clearly specified that nuclear waste was buried intentionally in the region and that is causing a lot of radioactive pollution. It is important for France to put all that waste somewhere safe. It cannot be left where there are animals and nomads. It might even end up in the agriculture cycle and the food chain and be consumed by people. These revelations about just how damaging these tests were led Abdul Karim to set up an association for the victims of nuclear testing in Algeria. We want the nuclear waste to be taken away from our region and we want France to take responsibility for some of the patients who had illnesses due to this atomic test. There have been some positive steps. In 2010, France passed a law allowing Algerian victims and French military veterans to receive compensation for health problems resulting from the tests. But out of 49 Algerian applications, only one person has so far been compensated. Jean-Marie Collin again. All these requests have been refused because the people concerned could not prove that they were at the test sites. But we need to understand that these people are nomads, so they don't have a fixed home. The other problem is that the law is written in French, whereas lots of Algerians speak Arabic. So a lot of Algerians don't know what their rights are and that they can request the compensation. In 2021, the French president Emmanuel Macron announced a Memories and Truth Commission aimed at improving relations between France and Algeria. When it comes to the nuclear tests, attempts at reconciliation are still ongoing. Recently, signatories to the UN's Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons met in Vienna to discuss the protection of populations living in former test sites. And although France isn't a signatory to this treaty, there is hope that international pressure could prompt the country to be more proactive in this area. As for Abdul Karim, he is now focused on the future. For la France, on a pas de haine. We have no hatred against France. All we want is for France to take responsibility and recognize the impact on the local population. Had we been given the choice, there is no way we would have accepted these tests taking place in our area. France, which considers itself a country of human rights, needs to look itself in the eye and recognize what happened. And the longer it takes for them to do that, the more negative consequences there will be. That was Abdul Karim Tuhami talking to me, Dan Hardoon, for that edition of the Witness History podcast. It was a Whistledown production for the BBC World Service. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.